Floyd Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on Tuesday the 19th of January 2016 and we have finished the build on the Terminator. So the build work is all done on this. Obviously there's still loads to come because we've got to get it in the paintwork and weather and then find the assembly and everything else like that. But basically all the build work is done. So now I can give sort of my opinion on the kit and everything else which is quite nice as a sort of follow up to the review we did on this one. And I have to say again it's Meng. It's very nice but and unfortunately there is a few buts with this kit first of all i don't like the styrene for some reason it's very reminiscent of trumpeter a few years ago even trumpeter's new sort of you know uh resin styrene even plastic seems to be a little bit better this is quite chunky hard to cut through um you know i've used my orange scissors to do it which sort of cut through everything but technically I was almost at the point where I could do some actual cutters um, to actually go through this one because it was just hard work to try and get it to go through. Ejector pins, plenty of ejector pins who were raised prominent that probably have been cut off. Uh, like these are a classic example. You can see on the inside here um, where you've got the little white bits still on there. Those bits are very prominent. You need to cut them off and sand them. Otherwise they're gonna interfere. And that's why I've sanded off those. If you don't, what happens is you sandwich two halves together. They just don't go anywhere near it. Now, if you didn't realize that was the problem, you might think it's some other part, some type of lineup and everything else like that. And then flash, to be honest, with Meng, I've never seen it before, but this particular one, we have got some little flashy parts. Now, this is me being very picky with it. The kit itself is on par with anybody else's, but this is a bit like what I did when I did the Mosquito review for um, Tamiya. You almost expect them to be perfect. Um, and I know I was coming off of this off the back of Bandai and I know I keep harping on about it and all the rest of it but tr you know Meng I still put in one of my top three of all time best manufacturers out there probably because when you buy the kit you know you're going to get a certain level of quality and unfortunately this one was nah, no different from anybody else's if I'm honest purely because I've been spoiled recently building very nice Meng kits and things like that now as you know I did the Bradley and the Bradley did not not have these problems I don't remember it having ejector pins I don't remember seeing flash or anything else I have to think it may be something to do with this green styrene so I don't know you guys you might have been through the same situation I know a few of you have built this kit as well uh, and everything else um, and nobody's really shouted out and reported that they've had a problem with it but from my point of view doing this one it was just it was came as a little bit of a shock shall we say I'm used to just putting them together they go together really well it wasn't usually you know I don't have to look around for flash uh, did on this one but I have to say I love the way it goes together the fit is fantastic once you take care of ejector pins and flash then it is no problem whatsoever and there's a couple of moving parts which are okay are a little bit gimmicky um, these particular uh, the hatches down here on the front the way that they've got the rubber seals around them that lift up uh, and everything else like that is a very nice touch I have to say um, but at the end of the day is it a little bit gimmicky are they worth it not too sure but just the look of the thing at the moment doesn't look too much because I haven't got the side skirts but when it's looking like that you know it's going to be absolutely fantastic so there we go so this one now is ready for the painting stage and obviously I'm going to get on with that early part of next week you've got a little bit of catching up to do this I think there's going to be another part maybe two before you get to the point where we're in the spray booth so it's going to be a couple of weeks now but then I hope to get this one painted next week and we are all good to go but from a review kit point of view I can now say it goes together fantastically it's a fantastic bill we know it's running really off of the T90 down below and everything else so I expect it to be roughly the same so it'd be interesting to see if that's a little bit flashy as well but I really have enjoyed it so out of 10 I would give it a firm eight and a half purely because when it does go together and you take care of the bits it's a solid build no problem at all so that leaves us with what we're up to next so starting now literally straight after this I'm going to be cracking on with the MiG-21 MF uh, to be honest the whole reason of doing this one is one I love MiG-21s I think they're a great one I've got a few of the other ones over there and to be honest until now I've always thought that the Eddard one is my go-to MiG and I have got an Eddard MF over there but we've got the Trumpeter one it's a brand new kit out we thought we'd give it a go and to be honest this is going to be a very straightforward quick build if I was to do the Eddard one which we might come back to later on in time obviously we're going to spoil it with all the goodies this is going to be straight out of the box apart from we're going to have it in flight okay so that means we're going have a pilot figure inside it uh, on the seat so we've got an aftermarket one of those which are really painted by our little Ben did it for me the other couple of months ago well this time last year 
uh, and everything else like that. But the main reason for doing this one, to be honest, was to have a go with these. Now, what we got down here is the Vallejo metal colors. Now, these are pure acrylic. This isn't AK stuff where, you know, we know how well and how good they are. We've done the F104 recently, look fantastic, and it is my go-to. And to be honest, they're sat there, pride of joy, and I use them all day long. These are great for hand painting, because I've been using them for hand painting, doing small jobs but I want to put them through the airbrush. We want to see exactly what we can get. So I'm thinking in flight, purely because I've got a Phantom over there, it's in flight as well, so it'll look very nice with both of them together. But certainly what we've got is a situation where full metal marking. So we're going to do straightforward Russian one. We've got some beautiful markings in this particular kit. There's a full review up on there. But yeah, I love this Polish one with this splinter scheme on top. That looks really, really nice. But you know, we've got the usual Iraqi ones down below, which to be honest, I've done all of those before. Some nice Czech ones. And we've got the actual East German markings as well. But because we are going for a... Uh, <coughs> natural metal finish all over this one that actually we're going to be doing this one with the bright red stars and the green and lots of different shades of metal and seeing exactly how good this stuff is so from a build point of view it'll be nice and quick very straightforward obviously we'll talk you right the way through it here on the site uh, and go through it all but it is going to be in flight so we're going to be doing gear up not sure if i'm going to actually put an acrylic rod in it yet um, i have got some or i might vote and just really go for a nice brass rod coming up from underneath as we've done with the phantom as well because they look nice as a nice desktop display model like that so there we go so that one's starting the first part of that i'll be up with you tomorrow as i say i'm going to crack on with it now we'll have enough by tomorrow afternoon i'll get edited up and we'll get that one up and then the next parts of the terminal will be up with you on monday so that's about it for today no live show um spoken to the guys what we're going to do is we're going to have a live show it's going to be slightly different format as in uh, we're going to go the first Tuesday of every month. We'll have a live show here starting at 7 p.m. It's going to run then for the first part of the show is going to be purely your questions and answers. And we'll keep the banter, shall we say, to a minimum. And then after that, then we'll go for it. Um, and we're going to make it a lot more fun, a lot more funny, if that's even possible. Uh, I'm going to do a quiz with the guys so we can have obviously we've got guests in here hopefully we're gonna have the full team as well so it'll be ron sid adam and me here steve if steve can get some of the guys around with him as well and what we're going to do is have like a mini quiz as well and loads of jokes and laughs afterwards so that way if you just want to see us you know answering questions and the bits and pieces and join us for the first part of the show second part of the show is like a free-for-all right and as we all know they can get rather riotous shall we say and all the rest of it but that's the idea with that one that way you're not bored of watching us every week and uh, it frees us up a bit more time we can put a little bit more preparation into the show and everything else like that for you so there we go that's it for today as i say you're going to crack on with these fantastic love the terminator absolutely beautiful kit and everything else like that just a little bit flashy check jumping marks and everything else apart from that go out and buy it it's well worth it and join us for the mig 21 mf so until tomorrow everybody happy modeling take care